This is Game of Thrones. We're doing The Night is Dark and Full of Terrors. Look at that sucker. That's a serious looking drink. It's also spraying hot burning stuff all over my hand, so I'm gonna put it down now. Uh, we're gonna keep this one quick. I think we needed a drink called A Night is Dark and Full of Terrors, and it needed to be a terrifying drink. You're gonna need some interesting things here. You're gonna need some rum. I like an Eldorado three year in this drink. Um, I played with it a couple different ways. This is the one that I thought was the best. And you're gonna need these Bittermans. Jocolatel. Zocolatel. Zocolatel. Chocolate. Chocolate. Chocolate mole bitters. And you will need, this is um, some cuttlefish ink that I bought um, and I combined one part cuttlefish ink with two parts water uh, to make a, a, a drink cuttlefish ink. Um, there was a trend for a little while to add darkness to drinks through the use of activated carbon. Happily, Camper English created a thing called Cocktail Safe, which is a database that tells us what is safe to use in your drinks and not. Turns out that there's some issues with putting activated charcoal into your cocktail. So it's probably not a good idea to put activated carbon or charcoal oil into your drink. I would stay away from it. Uh, this is safe. What does it taste like? Well, I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't smell great. It smells like a dead fish. Uh, but what does it taste like? It doesn't really taste like much, to be honest, especially in the way that we're gonna use it. It, it kind of just adds a little bit of saline to the drink, which is nice in a lot of drinks. It just sort of helps accentuate existing flavors the same way that a saline solution would. So you can kind of use it interchangeably that way, which is fun. Of course, it's mostly for effect. We're using this because we want the drink to look a certain way. I need a half an ounce of Demerara Simple Syrup. Uh, and this is nothing more than a simple syrup made from Demerara sugar that is two parts sugar, one part water. I need two to three dashes of these Bitterman's Chocolate Mole uh, Bitters. These are lovely. These are a dark, chocolatey, spicy thing. I personally tend to think that, I mean, a dash is maybe a little less than that, but that a dash is a lot more than a drop. So these bitters that come with an eyedropper, don't be too shy about it. Of course, you're going to taste. And I need an ounce and a half of my Eldorado three-year rum. Uh, and now I want to add a couple dashes of my squid ink. I don't want to overdo it because it is a kind of salt, but I don't want to underdo it either. Most things might tend to taste the way they smell. This doesn't. When we shake it, actually, the smell is going to be brought way down, but for the moment, Definitely, there's a very uh, Iron Islands vibe going on with it. The other thing too is that, you know where you find this in food a lot is in, um, in pastas. They make like a cuttlefish or squid ink pasta, those black pastas, that's how they're made. Uh, it, it really just adds like a saltiness to it. Okay, we're gonna shake this drink. I always do my one big cube, my one, whoop, my one cracked cube. I like the idea of putting it into this glass. Elegant, up, goblety, looks like wealth, but medieval wealth, I like that. This is certainly not an obligation, but if you have it and you really wanna go the extra mile with presentation on this one, you could dress this drink up with a bit of dry ice. Um, and I'm gonna do that here because it's gonna look really cool. I, I have to caution you from doing this in any drink you're gonna directly hand to a guest. Uh, before anybody drinks this, that should be fully evaporated. Uh, there is, it is absolutely unsafe. It is absolutely unsafe. Uh, if you ingest that, you will have to have your stomach amputated. Please don't drink that. But this is a fantasy program. We're here to make pretty pictures. Uh, and so sometimes I make considerations in that direction that otherwise I would not. final component of this drink. I'm gonna do something I don't normally do, but I think we'll add a little bit of extra something to this drink. So I've got a sugar cube here that I'm going to soak in a little bit of absinthe and um, suspend it over of an absinthe spoon. Uh, there's a listing for absinthe spoons in the link in my show description. We wanna make sure that we ward off the dark by keeping the night fires burning. For the dark, his night. For the dark! For the night, for the night, for the night is dark and full of tires. Tires. 
For the dark is night. For the... Yep. For the night is dark and full of terrors. Of course, I am reminded of the Dark Star. Not the Sword of the Morning, but the Dark Star. I am of the night. It's a character from the book. He doesn't make it to the movie, to the show. Show movie. He doesn't make it to the show. That's kind of burned out, so we're going to drop that cube in there and give it a good stir. So as you can see, I'm now removing my dry ice from this drink so as to not poison myself because that would be a very bad thing to drink. You definitely want to do that before you serve this or make sure it's completely done bubbling before you do drink it. Um, but let's have this night is dark and full of terrors. That is actually really lovely. It has a very smooth, round, a slightly licorishly, licorice sweetness with that rum kind of fruity funk. It has a nice long evolution as the absinthe from that sugar cube gives way, takes over. It does not taste like fish or squid at all. The salt is just there to help bring it all together. I really like that drink. It's a little bit sweet, honestly. I don't know that I could drink more than one of them. It's a slow drink. If you drink that, I wouldn't drink that quickly. It's a sipper. Um, it's not like a sour or something like that. It's more like a Manhattan. You know, you don't chug it. Um, so it's a bit heavy. It's a bit heavy, but it's definitely not bad. And I like it quite a bit. And it certainly looks the part, doesn't it? Well, what we did with the burning sugar cube, that's like a thing that a lot of people think you're supposed to do with absinthe, but you're not. But it looks cool. You can do it. You can use it. The burned sugar does definitely add something to this drink. You get that caramel. There's a lot of caramel in here. Well, that's how to drink the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. And uh, this has been another edition of the Game of Thrones series. Uh, and I'm on Twitter at HowToDrink, and I'm on Instagram at HowToDrink, and I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash HowToDrink. I'll see you guys later this week with another episode of How to Drink, and I'll see you next week with another episode of the Game of Thrones series. Ooh, spooky. I wanted to get a little um, crouton in the shape of a tiny girl, Shireen, to burn on there. Sick burn. Yeah.